Hand me your firearm. Go on home. I can book it. Tell me what you want me to do. I want you to give me your gun and go home and sleep it off. You get your last paycheck in the mail. What the You firing me? Give me the gun. Now that you found your new best friend, you're done with me? I protected you so many times, Pete. Tried to get you cleaned up, changed attendance records, all because you've got a family. Well, I can't help you anymore. We had budget cuts the last three years. You just made my decision a lot easier. If somebody's getting fired because budget cuts, it better be the Chinese guy. I got seniority on the Chinese guy. Chinese guy comes to work on time. Chinese guy doesn't get drunk and wave his gun around. The Chinese guy doesn't park his cruiser off 201 and sleep through his shift. And the Chinese guy is Korean. You now give me the gun and go home. Wow, that was a scene from the new series, American Rust, which premiered last night on Showtime. And joining us now, it's star and executive producer, Emmy-winning actor, Jeff Daniels. It's so good to see you, Jeff. How good. are you? I'm good. It's good to be seen, Mika. Good to be seen. <laughs> I hear you on that. Um, well, tell us about American Rust. I mean, this just looks incredibly powerful. Um, we've been talking about you a lot lately here on Morning Joe about some other things you've done, which we'll get to later. Oh, God. Um, but, <laughs> but tell, I know, but tell us um, what, what really compelled you to get behind this project. Philip Meyer's book, uh, it was a debut novel, novel for Philip back in 2009. I saw a reading of, uh, of, of, of Philip reading the book in a, book, a bookstore here in Manhattan and I just kind of kept tabs on it, and then when I got into a position to m get something made, I said, let's chase American Rust. And certainly now, <clears throat> with, with the country where it is, and a lot of people you know, chasing the American dream that for a lot of them has, has uh, left, um, growing up in Michigan, growing up working class, uh, it, it really, uh, I knew this guy, I am this guy, and I wanted to dive into where this guy is right now in, you know, today's America. You know, To Kill a Mockingbird uh, and your portrayal of Atticus Finch was so timely uh, for the time uh, that you did it and will be timely uh, when you go back on Broadway. Talk about American Rust uh, and how uh, the relevance uh, that it has to the time that we're going through right now. Well, they, both American Rust and Mockingbird are, are similar in that they speak to this, this crossroads that, that the country is, 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 finds itself in. Um, there are people around the country, not just in southwest Pennsylvania, who have been abandoned, left behind. The jobs went elsewhere. And uh, they're looking for somebody to tell them the truth. They're looking for somebody to, you know, uh, keep their promise and to maybe keep those jobs here. With Mockingbird, certainly post-George Floyd's murder, you have a, a, a bigger awareness of, of white blindness. And I think Aaron Sorkin's play of the book addressed that. It addressed it before George Floyd's murder. And, and I think even now, with a lot of white people understanding that the history that maybe they learned in school isn't the whole history and, and really just coming to grips with do you want to be a part of the new America? Do you want to usher in an all-inclusive America? And for those of us who think that that's a good thing, uh, Mockingbird speaks directly to the white people who are the ones who need to hear it, uh, that yes, it is a good thing and yes, we can be better than this and yes, it can be a new day. Well, Jeff, talk about how important it is for you as an artist um, as you take on these characters, as you take on these roles, to have made the decision to stay in Michigan, to stay connected to the community, to understand and even while uh, picking topics and picking subjects and picking uh, TV series and plays that deliver that message. Uh, it helps you keep your feet in the ground and have empathy for those who are frustrated because they've been left behind by globalization. I hear them. I, I, I work around them. I, I really could have been, if the acting thing hadn't worked out, I'd be back at my dad's lumber company, now run by my brother, and I'd be, you know, working there. I'd be driving truck. I'd be doing whatever, you know, that was. Um, they're not stupid people. 
they're not less. We certainly feel that in, in the Midwest, you know, flyover country. You know, when you come to the coasts, certainly as an actor, I felt it, that I was, I had to work harder to beat the guys from Yale and Juilliard and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. I was just from a Central Michigan University. So <clears throat> I, I understand that kind of, you know, behind the eight ball kind of thing that they feel. And mm. they have, uh, certainly with social media, with the global kind of, everybody has everything on their phone. Um, they're very aware and they just want a fair yeah. shake. They just want a fair shake. You know, uh, I don't know if you remember when I visited you in Michigan for CBS News Sunday morning um, and I went to the lumber company with you. I met your dad mm -hmm. and I mean, what you're talking about is real guys. Um, and in terms of your dad, a really good man. Yeah, and it seems I, to I, I, based, me... I based Atticus on dad. I wish he'd been able to see it. Um, my dad was a Republican. I grew up in a Republican household. And I'll never forget, eight years old, walking into my house, and there's dad sitting with an African-American man, probably the first African-American man I'd seen. And he said, Jeffrey, this is a friend of mine. His name's Herbie Pearson. His family just moved to town. Mr. Pearson, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, get out of here. Yes, sir. Boom, gone. But <laughs> he, took, he took Herbie around town, and he introduced him to every one of his white business friends and Republican friends in the same way. This is a friend of mine. His family moved here. He got Herbie into the church that Dad was going to. He welcomed him to the community, a Republican. I'll never forget that. That's how I was raised. There is equality. There is every the respect for other people was drilled into me. So when you go into an Atticus Finch, mm. uh, I don't have to look too far to pull that character up. Whether it's Atticus Finch and the, the core of who your father was um, or American Rust and the people that you have lived alongside with in Michigan all your life. Do you think you'd be able to bring as much to the table in your characters if you had moved to Hollywood? <laughs> the question answers no. itself. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't think that would have. And that was the choice. I mean, that, I mean, it certainly mm -hmm. wasn't to to be more in the world and all of that but but it, it no I, that would have been a different that would have been a different life i'm very happy with the move we raised our kids in a part of the country we understand how to do it kathleen and i are both from there so it, it's worked out well and now at this point in my career i get to do things that matter which is a luxury for an actor and i'm very fortunate you know, um, Joe, he gave me a ride in his RV. Yes. Um, so I feel like one of the lucky ones here. When I went to visit Jeff, we went in a ride in his RV. Which yes. I still I have some questions about, but we won't ask them on the air. Sure. And, um, <laughs> and, and again, I got a chance to, to go through that lumber company. Um, and, and there's your dad, who I'm telling you, he, it, you're right. I mean, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't find a better man um, who loved you more. Um, he, he had a decency and, and to him. Even before you were big. He had a, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had a decency to him. He had a civility to him. He had a respect for other people. He had a do unto others work ethic and life ethic. Um, yeah. He, he, he told me, even I remember being a 23-year-old actor who'd maybe done an off-Broadway play or two. Him taking me out to dinner, which was weird, and then him sitting me down, he goes, I just want you to know that I'm already proud of you. Mm. Okay. Mm. I didn't mm. quite get it, but it was just, uh, and I, I'll never forget that. Yeah, that's, who, that's who he was. That's who he was. And so I, uh, you know, he's watching. He's still watching. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he is. I'll tell you what, we, we watched uh, your latest CBS Sunday morning uh, show uh, interview and started Tracy. tearing up uh, when 
you told the story. Uh, before we let you go, though, um, you know, Mika was very sheltered culturally. Her father didn't let her watch TV or movies. So I'm taking her through the greatest movies of all time. And so for me, of course, that's Citizen Kane, yeah. Godfather 2, and Dumb and Dumber. Which so I, I have never admit, seen. I must admit, she did not get Dumb and Dumber. Jeff. Jeff. It was heartbreaking. Awful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It'll be on my tombstone, unfortunately, or fortunately. Yeah, the, the, the tombstone will read, I'm shaving. That's what'll be. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Still I'm funny. Glad I didn't it's see still it funny. I came out to see you. It's still, no, it's still funny. It's it not. is still amazing. And it, it, is, uh, it is, again, one of the three greatest movies of all time. The new Showtime series is American Rust, and that's what you should watch. Jeff Daniels, thank you. Great to see you. Uh, we really appreciate it. And that does it for us this morning. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.